Uh, we would like to go ahead and open the meeting. Um, you can go ahead, Mr. Kerr. Roll call. The roll call for the September 21st, FY23 budget public hearing. The Honorable Captain F. Rao, District 1. Present. The Honorable Carmelita Gomes, District 2. Present. The Honorable Helen Z. Willis, District 3. Helen Willis, District 3. Thank you. The Honorable J.C. Sebastian, District 4. The Honorable Corey A. Reeves, District 5. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, can I have a point of privilege to explain the absence of many of us that are not there? One, one moment. The Honorable Natasha Williams, District 6. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, Mayor thank Pro Tem, you, you do have a quorum. You don't have a quorum in person yet, but we do have three members present, so we can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, um, Madam Willis, go ahead with your point of privilege. Hi, um, thank you for the residents who are um, in person or attending um, virtually. Um, I just want to ask that you all excuse the absence of us. Uh, we are um, in a training on business. Um, so that is why we are participating with this uh, hearing um, virtually. Thank you. And the training right. is a Georgia Municipal Association training. All right. Thank you for that. Um, Mr. Clerk, go ahead and sign the first item. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. The first item is the FY23 budget public hearing. Uh, did we want to open up uh, the pres do the presentation and then have the public hearing? Okay. So the presentation will be provided by the finance direct director, Karen Slayton Dixon. Requirements according to um, Georgia Code 36-81. It requires that each municipality is required to op and operate under an annual uh, balanced budget for the general fund, each special revenue fund, and each debt service fund. Each municipality is required to adopt and operate on a project length balanced budget for each capital project fund, which is what we're presenting tonight. Each municipality is required to notify the public that the budget proposal is available for a public review and conduct a public hearing at least one week prior to the adoption of the budget resolution or ordinance, which uh, we Ms. did. Ms. Dixon, may I, may I interrupt you? Okay. Now, since we have the mayor in the official in-person forum, he can call the order so that we want to repeat. Mr. Mayor, we did. We did a roll call, and uh, since you are present at 6.07, if you could call the meeting to order. Okay, I, um, I'll call the meeting to order. Are these folks aren't joining us online? Yes. Oh. I'll call the meeting to order. Okay. All right, an amendment. Any increase in appropriation at the legal level of control of the local government, whether accomplished through a change in anticipated revenues in any fund or through a transfer of appropriation among departments require that approval to come back before the governor authority, which is the council. And so you give a um, budget in the brief. I just want to go over and let them know that
that the the city has 17 funds totaling $178 million. And you'll see that the general fund is actually 103, 142, 360. Then we have blighted properties at 300,000, confiscated funds at 100,000, E911 at 1 million 929, 30. We have American Rescue Plan at 5 million 645, 376. We have the grants fund at a million dollars. We have the Public Art Commission at $150,000. And then transfer to the DDA, which is $150,000. We have the Hotel Motel Fund at $545,600. We have T-Squads at $17,500,000. We have the Capital Grants Fund at um, $1,118,330. And that's actually our debt service uh, fund for the URA. We have our Capital Projects Fund, which is at $27,877,310. Our URA fund is at $3,013,568. Solid Waste is at $8,870,200, and that is an enterprise fund. We have the Camera Fund at $4,700,000, and as I noted, that's the new fund for FY23. We have Wolf Creek at $1,000,000. Stormwater MS4 at 1,358,272. And so we actually have two proposed new departments in the FY23 budget, and those are the External Affairs Department and the Grants Department. So the FY23 proposed um, budget for the general fund under the revenues, we show property tax at 53,018,000 which is a 48.5% uh, of the overall general fund budget. We have motor vehicle at 1,700,000, franchise fees at 7,100,000, local option sales tax, which is at 21,500,000 at 19.7%. Uh, and I'm noting the percentages because the property tax and the local option sales tax are our Number um, top two revenue generators for the general fund. We have business and occupational tax at 2865000 We have insurance premium tax at 7127000 Other taxes at 264600 License and permits at 2813100 We have the IGA revenue, which is 896664 uh, fees for services at 889965 fines and forfeitures at 700000 other revenue at 1522800 and then we have budget use of revenues and here we have 2745233 uh, but then that number does go up because of the fact that the general fund actually transfer in about 6.4 million to um, compensate for other funds like our blighted properties. So the total general fund revenue is $103,142,360. Yep. And so in the general fund expenditures, we show a breakdown that our personnel comes in at $58,862,772. Operations, $37,914,828. And we, this is where I talked about the transfers at six million three sixty four seven sixty, and then our capital projects, which is twenty seven million eight seventy seven three ten, and this amount has not been funded, so this amount is not pulled from reserves, which we will, once the budget is approved, go out for funding for that twenty seven million through some short term um, low interest rate loans to cover these uh, capital projects. So we have a total of 131 million 19670 in expenditures tied to the general fund. And so I want to note that on our positions, we actually have 594 full-time new positions come in at 89 positions, bringing a total of positions to 683 um, positions. So this, and then this sheet here, which is it's kind of hard to see here, but it shows which departments actually have the, the new departments uh, or new positions, like in the city manager, where um, they're requesting one new position um, in the 
going to read across here, um, the grants department, because it is going to be a separate department, one new position. We have uh, the, the legal and law department, one position. We have information and technology, two positions. And then external affairs, we're having uh, three positions because this is a new department. And for general services, we have two, depart uh, two positions. Within the police department, they're requesting 31 new positions, six positions in the fire rescue department, seven positions in public works. And because public works is actually bringing the services that were form formerly covered by Jacob, bringing that in-house. Uh, we're having three positions within solid waste because solid waste will also be handled by the city under the auspice of the public works. We have um, our cult, uh, parks and recreation, 27 uh, positions. And of this 27 new positions, 12 of them will be um, part-time as requested by council in a formal meeting. Uh, we have two in cultural affairs and then two in code enforcement and then one in our um, economic and development um, department. So. That kind of makes up our 89 new positions. Go to the next slide. And so here, this is our general fund expenditures by um, department. You will see we have legislative, which is uh, 1,753,350, and that is made up of our districts one through seven and our mayor office. The executive is 4,688,590. And that is made up of our city manager's office, our city clerk, and our legal department. Then you have finance at 2,353,200, and that includes our procurement and contracts um, department. Then we have the new uh, department, grants um, department at 301,800, information technology at 3,892,200, human resources at 1,141,950, Risk management at 2,880,000. Uh, we have communications at 1,889,950. External affairs, a new department at 392,200. Facilities at 1,756,000. General services at 2,732,900. Municipal court at 1,119,976. Police at 21,487,250, and fire at 21,023,134. And then we have public works at 12,709,226. Parks and recreation at 6,609,85. Cultural affairs at 1,486,822. Community development at 3,248,125. Code enforcement at 3,308,400. Destination South Fulton, which is economic development, at 1,695,492. Uh, and then we have Main Street, uh, Red Oak, at 307,950. And then once again, our transfers at 6,364,760. And that brings you to the general fund expenditures of 103,142,360. And then here on this, uh, we have the general fund expenditures. And so this breaks down some of the, the money that is made up of the transfers. So we have the blighted properties that actually gets a transfer from the general fund of 300,000. We transfer um, to need 911, 1,929,30. Um, DDA, 150,000. And then for multiple grant funds, 1,000,000. And then we have a transfer, we spoke of the, the capital projects at 27,877,310. Transfer to the debt service for URA, which is 1,118,330. Our public art commission, which is $150,000. Uh, transfer to uh, stormwater this year is gonna be 217,400. And transfer to Wolf Creek, 1 million, and then a contingency is five hundred thousand dollars so that's a total of thirty four million two forty two seventy okay and 
so on our capital projects, we have uh, parts uh, requests coming in at one million six ninety eight four hundred. We have cultural affairs uh, requests at two hundred five thousand. Fire at eight million three thirty five six seventy five. Police at three million seven twenty eight four forty seven. Public works at thirteen million nine oh nine seven eighty eight for a total of twenty seven million eight seventy seven um, three ten with the majority of the capital expenditures going to public works at 50%. We have the police at 13%. We have the cultural affairs at 1%, and then parts is at uh, 6%. And so the, the next couple of slides just um, break down to show you the, the different items that have actually been requested on the, the capital projects um, here. Um, just like want to highlight definitely within the parks and rec that we've included a million dollars to cover any citywide um, park improvements and any acquis um, acquisitions that need to take place as it relates to parks and recreation. Um, just kind of general things going into our cultural affairs. And then we have a um, million dollars for the fueling station, which is for four pumps. And this is for construction and cost design. Then we have um, public works and then highlight part of their 12,909,788. Um, a big portion of that is going to be the FIB resurfacing um, because of the fact that there is not enough uh, funds left in two spots to actually cover this particular project. So it's at $4,328,588. Um, I want to highlight that um, $1,987,000 is coming in for facilities and site Im improvements. We have $1,500,000 also for um, bridge maintenance, which is actually um, citywide. So there, that, those are three um, high numbers for the public works request. And we'll move into the, the fire department, their requests. I want to highlight a couple of their um, high numbers. It's going to be a ladder. They're asking for a ladder, which is $1,200,000. Um, uh, the next item would what, be 1400000 which is the fire apparatus replacement, um, $2 million for uh, the renovate station six, and uh, let's see, $2 million there. And so those are three high um, numbers in the request for the fire department. Then we have the police department. Uh, they have one item here at $2 million, and that is for the police department headquarter um, building. So they're asking for $2 million to, to fund that project. Okay. And then here we're going to um, go through, and with the, the districts, all of the districts, um, district one through, through five through six, they all have the same um, budget dollar amount. Their budget is 209-400. You will see dollar amounts in different areas because in the operating uh, piece of their budget, they are able to move the money around according to how they see fit. So if they want more money in travel, they can put more money in travel, but the bottom line doesn't go over 209-400. Uh, uh, when we get down a little bit further in District 7, we'll see that that budget is much less. So we'll go on through and through the districts. So as I say, the districts um, are all the same, 209, 400. Let me go to where we get to District 7. And so in District 7, we have $169,050 in District 7 because of the fact that seat is actually vacant. And with the person coming on, um, being elected in November, they won't take um, office until January. So we only budgeted about 75% of their budget to run from 
January through the end of uh, September. So that's why their budget is less than all the other districts. And then we have the city clerk's um, budget at $1,329,440. Um, and I think I have gone through the, the different um, budgets, but then I want to highlight that on the mayor's budget, So with the mayor budget, his budget is 327900 and that is because he actually has two positions in, in his budget, and his operating um, budget is actually 70000 compared to the district's budget, um, operating budgets being 60000 So the mayor um, does get a um, little bit higher budget than the, the district's. So that, that's the reason for the difference of 327900 And so I've gone through the, the departments and actually given what their totals are. So I want to move now to is it go to the page um, page for me, um, City Clerk, which says proposed budget things to know. In this particular docket, this document, this presentation is on the city's um, website as well for review. Okay. And so um, things to know. I want to just make highlight that the millage rate was adopted at 12.899, and um, property tax is the city's largest revenue generator with local option sales tax being the, the second largest. With the annexation of FIB, the tax digest increased by 12.9 million. And as I mentioned, the FY23 proposed budget includes 89 new positions. Capital projects will need a funding source, which we will look at um, after the, the fiscal year start. Um, proposed updated fee schedule will be proposed in November of this year uh, when the city manager had requested that it be brought before for the council, for the budget, well, there are going to be some changes coming through CDRA, so we felt that it would be best just to wait so that you wouldn't adopt the current schedule and then be back in November adoption a new schedule. So that will be brought back before council. Um, services provided by Jacobs will be brought in-house by Public Works, so that's kind of some of the, the increase within Public Works. And so, and I wanted to highlight before I get in any questions, just kind of highlight a couple of the departments that actually increased. We show where the, the city clerk's department actually increased by 125%, uh, percent, and that's just because of the increase in positions that actually is going in duties that are going over to the city clerk. I um, want to highlight also within the risk management, their budget actually increased by 164%. Um, 0.9%, and this is over the FY22 budget, and that's just because of the increase in the, the liability insurance that has come in. Um, in communications, we have an increase of 157.9%, and that's because of some additional projects and, and different things that communication is actually taking on. I um, want to highlight um, also um, destination South Fulton, which is 155.5, um, and that is because Old National and Destination South, South Fulton were rolled into one department, so we don't have the Old National um, department um, any longer. So we just wanted to highlight just a few of those. So at this time, I'll be open to any questions. I'm going to ask, uh, Council, did you want to ask your questions first? before we do public comment? Okay, go ahead, Dr. Rob. As it relates to the camera fund, um, will that be segregated out to deal with the pedestrian and safety fund? Uh, it'll be different. It, it, well, because this is based on the district, so that each district has a dollar amount, and I do apologize that I didn't think to bring that um, breakdown. 
I can I can get that for you because I do have staff here with me looking for that what that breakdown is going to be. Okay. And then also um, for the public art fund, would that be a set? I know you talked about 17 funds. Is that one of the ones that is now broken out or going forward? Yes, and the public art uh, fund is already set up. Here. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, another question. Um, does this, so the IGA revenue, does that only include the city of Atlanta fire service, or is there any other IG revenue in that line item? It's actually, yes, just the uh, city of Atlanta and then the fire that we have. Do we anticipate a change in that? I know they're um, building some kind of facility at County Line and Camelton Road. Do we expect that that's going to continue going forward? When I checked with um, Fire Chief Chad Jones, he didn't indicate that, that that was the number he gave me. So he didn't indicate that it was going to change. Okay. And um, my final question is, do we have a bond rating? Because I know one of the things you talked about is the need to look at short-term no-interest loans. Mm -hmm. And you said you're going to look into that at the beginning of the year. But from what we've done with URA, does that suffice in terms of getting us a rating, or do we need to do more to establish um, that? We'll need to do more because I had reached out to Ed Wall, our financial advisor, about that. So he had mentioned about making sure that our – fund balance, which are waiting for the FY21 numbers to come out, so we'll have a general idea of what our fund balance is okay. to make sure that we are set for that process. Um, and when we talk about the – one of the things, of course, you know, lost is we, we really don't know what people will spend, and we're also going through a negotiation with the county at this time. Um, I think you said that it was off by four million. Is it that it just didn't generate as much as projected, or is it because that came in later for FIB? Oh yes, it actually because it, it came in later. Okay. We actually got the numbers from the county later, so that's why we had to go out and re-advertise for the millage rate. Okay, so, yeah. so that impact. Yeah. I don't have any additional questions. All right, thank you, and thank you for uh, keeping us on point with our bond rating. Mm -hmm. Councilman Jones? Okay, um, thank you for your presentation. So mm -hmm. I guess one of my questions, and you may have answered this before, so the budget that is proposed in front of us does not include loss at this point in time. Only it does. does. It does include loss at a rate of $21.5 million. Mm -hmm. But after the first of the year, January, we may have to come back. We may not because we're not sure. We try to project at a kind of a conservative level. But, you know, if it comes where we don't get that money, then we'll need to come back and take a look at everything. That's why we're proposing that any of the new positions that the city just hold off and don't hire for those until after January the 1st, just in case. And is that the same reason as far as for the capital project, as far as waiting until the first of the year? Right. Yeah, just so we can also so we can see what's going to actually roll over into our reserve funds mm -hmm. from this fiscal year, because we may have enough that roll over into the reserve that we may be able to pay for it from the reserve. We're just not sure just yet until we start doing the audit process. Okay. Um, the construction of the fire training center that mm -hmm. is supposed to be coming off the Cascade Palmetto, mm -hmm. um, where do – I know I, I've spoken with the, the chief mm -hmm. in regards to that. Is there money available or would that come – the funding will come out of the capital projects for, like, it, construction it managers and things of that right, nature? Right. It is not. Um, as we spoke with the chief, we had a meeting earlier in the week, and we want to get a meeting with the city manager because that project is going to be looking at $44 million. For, for the fire station? Right. And that is one reason why we suggested not to do the rollback of the millage rate because we knew that that project was coming on board. And so we just have a lot of things that's coming down the pipe that's going to require some money. So we don't have that $44 million scheduled. So it's going to have to actually go out and, and generate some – do some type of funding source. And so that's what we're going to be looking at as well, some type of 
um, GFA loans that we can pay back at a short um, period of time. Okay. Yeah. And my last question, just for the edification of the public, do you have a number of how much we're saving by bringing Jacobs in-house versus uh, continuing to have them outsource? Uh, I don't have that number, but I know Mr. Antonio is here to, to answer that. Did he leave? Oh, yeah, it's you. and residents of Tia Suffolk, Tia Manager. Uh, with, with regards to your question, I don't have a specifically a number, but uh, because we didn't have the whole certainty of approval to disapproval, mm -hmm. but the projections look really good for the city. I think that it's potentially we'll have, not necessarily savings, but we will be able to do more with the same uh, contract amount that we had before. Okay, so what I would like for you to do, if you can provide that number so we can, you know, a lot of residents are kind of feeling uneasy about um, bringing the services in, not all of them, but some residents are feeling uneasy about bringing Jacobs in-house. So if we can show them the benefit or the cost savings, um, I think that will kind of um, show the taxpayer that, you know, it's a better option. Uh, absolutely. Um, just a clarification that we're not bringing in-house. Okay. It is a hybrid approach. Mm -hmm. We're bringing uh, specific services that uh, we're going straight to the right uh, sources. So we're going to the middleman. Mm -hmm. We're going to apply that. So we have uh, two main uh, consultant and contractors that are going to be providing to us as we need, as well as to increase uh, some of the uh, items, uh, some of the personnel and some equipment for the FIB that we've been handling since last year, as well as, uh, as you know, solid waste has been brought up in-house, and the specific uh, areas that we brought in-house, so it's, it's, it is a hybrid approach. So are those new positions that we'll have to wait till January for, or will they those positions come in after we adopt the budget? Uh, some of the positions were approved back in oh, mid-year, okay. Okay. so we, we, we already uh, filled most of them. Okay, okay, well thank you. Yes, ma'am. That's all my questions. I'm going to go right down the list since we're having a hybrid meeting. Councilwoman Willis, did you have questions? All right, thank you. District 4, Councilman Sebastian. It actually was a, a renovation. Right. District 5, Councilman Reeves. Um, that we have in. Can you hear me? Can you um, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. That we have in. And I actually only see um, fire station um, six in here. I, I don't see any other uh, facilities noted in his capital request. Mayor, pardon me, did he say cameras? No, the, the council member Reeves, we, I couldn't hear him. Is that all, Councilman Reeves?
in Super Mario Bros. 78, there was a burglary. And they were said to have been here 20 plus years to look at what that would be like if you were going to file your tax evasion. And they were said that our town mayor, that if you live here and work here and start business here, we have two year tax evasion. But this has gone on a big percentage of media busted budget. So I'm asking. Other than they come up with that and a proposal or presentation. Okay. Received. Thank you, Councilman Reeves. Uh, District 6, Councilwoman Williams. No questions. All right, I have a couple of questions to make sure that's okay. Okay. Um, the, the first question, and I guess this would be for uh, Mr. Valenzuela, our Public Works Director, as well as Ms. Slayton Dixon. I just want to be clear, whatever money that we need, to complete or continue the work of building the sidewalks on Old National between Flat Shoals and 138. Is that in this budget? And if so, where is that? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the share, uh, the 20% match for the different phases of Old National Highway from Flat Shoals to say Route 138 is part of the capital under uh, 2023. This is uh, this capital budget on pages 11 through 13 here. Okay, I do see that. I just want to make sure that all the money that we need it. So our 20% match is there, and we have confirmed that it is the numbers haven't changed from when we did it ori originally because of inflation or costs of materials or equipment or anything like that. So we're continuing updating our estimates. We're in the final design. Uh, we're requesting a final uh, design estimate, but the ultimate dollar amount would be once we bid the project out, that's when we'll know what the actual cost will be. Will we see any shovels in the ground in 23 for that? It is our, uh, absolutely our goal, our consultants have been uh, put in notice, all of them, and uh, we're doing everything possible to ensure that that will happen. Awesome. Um, moving on, I have three more areas to cover. Uh, Wolf Creek, I see here in our, um, that we have a million dollars in this budget, but I was looking for more detail about that. My, my first question is really a legal question. Do we own Wolf Creek now, Mr. Hyman, or are we still leasing? We're still on the current lease agreement, which can be extended or ended. All right, and we and we haven't uh, because that ends the 31st. Have we? It ends this year. Have we um, gotten a new one or asked for a renewal? Or the renewal period would be November. Okay. And then in this in this under this million dollars. Um, Ms. Slayton Dixon, how much of that is for maintenance and repairs and how much of it is for like operating expenses? Have we built a budget out that far yet? No, and that's actually being handled by the, the city manager's office, the special project person. And this million dollars is really kind of a placeholder until all of the assessment is, is done because you really don't know exactly what it's gonna cost, but it, it will be um, used to take care of the operations as needed. Not sure, you know, Kareem is not here. Madam City Manager, do you want to add anything to that? So, Adlex uh, was out at the facility last <coughs> Friday, I believe, and so we are waiting to get our report from them, Mayor, on their assessment of the facility, and then we will know how much we'll need to go towards maintenance. And as soon as I get that from my office, I will make sure that the council gets it. And then we'll be able to know exactly what out of that $1 million will go towards uh, the actual operating costs. Awesome. Um, I, 
I, I would just like to make mention that as we are building out the actual operating side, right, the, uh, the operating budget for doing shows and everything, that we um, consider some, some, that we make some sort of consideration for local vendors and local promoters. We've done a couple of very expensive events at Wolf Creek that haven't been, you know, very well attended. And I think that if we partnered with some of the people who have been working in this city and doing events in the city, you know, over the past several years, that they might, they might be able to get us better results at, for less money. So that's just something to think about. Um, all right, my my next um, topic is the retention pond. Is there money in this budget to do anything with the 33 retention ponds that Fulton County or no one has cleaned out for like the past four or five years? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, as part of uh, our budget contingency, it, it is considered as soon as uh, we receive the goal, uh, public work will handle it. Awesome. And then wait, you can and stay right there with Ms. Slayton Dixon. Mayor, can I add to yes, also to that, right. that, you know, assuming that the city wants to take over those 33 because we are still, uh, you know, our attorney is still working to try to negotiate whether or not that would be Fulton County's responsibility or the city's responsibility. Right. I, um, it, it, and I, I hear you. As a, should should we have to do it? I just want to make sure that we have budgeted for it. Someone definitely needs to do it. It's been five years or more since they've been done, and so it's only getting more expensive um, and more dangerous. Uh, my last question is about the the, the school zone camera funds. Um, I really gotta be a little assertive about this. This The ordinance that we passed in 2021 created a restricted fund. And I don't see that listed, you know, on that list of funds in page 10. If we followed the ordinance um, that was passed unanimously, according to page 69, there's $4.7 million in that camera fund. So we should have 1.175 million in a restricted fund just for speed bumps. When we are just, really, it's for other, it's for traffic calming measures. But uh, I, I'm actually working on revising that because what we have found is that out of that, you know, 1.175 million about $740,000 of it never made it into the fund. And out of the whole nearly 1.2 million, there's only been one set of speed bumps installed in the entire city. So like, there's, there's obviously a disconnect from what the legislative intent was and the, um, where we are. But I, I would like to ask, why, why don't we see that restriction? camera fund listed there. So I was thinking that the speed bump traffic common was a different area. Can you let me know if that's different in terms of as, as part of the traffic calming program, uh, Public Works put a, a fair um, system that will allow each district to do different things. And so um, speed tables or speed bumps, it is part of the traffic calming. Uh, when you do traffic calming, you have design, uh, uh, con conceptual design, final design, and then construction. But we're following you know, the audience. Uh, as you mentioned, there are many things in the audience that uh, Public Works is allowed to do, some are not. Okay, so I hear that, and as I said, we're, we're uh, I'm actually working with some city staff to bring a revision to this traffic calming policy. But again, this, this resolution creates a separate reserved fund. And, and the reason that I'm really harping on this is the, like the blighted property program, you know, these, these were things that were brought to my attention by residents. This is how residents want to see their public works dollars spent. 
And one of the things that I discovered when I became a councilman is that there is, there is never a specific pot of money set aside. And so that's why we created this separate blighted property fund and this separate um, traffic calming fund because we wanted to make sure the money didn't disappear into the general fund. It didn't get absorbed, which is literally what has happened. Um, and that it rolled over from year to year. So it's, I, I am really going to need to see in this list on page 10 um, with the American Rescue Plans, the Capital Grants Fund, the URA Fund, the Solid Waste Fund, the MS4 Stormwater Fund, and the Blighted Property Fund, I need to see a pedestrian safety fund with $1.175 million in it. Or $1.175 million minus those two speed bumps on Gordon Street and the, I think you bought some signs for like 174000 but there should still be like a million dollars left in there. All right, we'll take care of that. Yeah. All right, and then, and then last but not least, with the Blighted Property Fund, we were talking about this earlier, Mr. Adams. We have, and I just, I just want to put it on the record, um, it's now funded at $300,000 a year, but which is different than what the original legislation in 2019 was. I think it was like 150. And in our Muni Code, uh, City Attorney Hyman, it states that it's 200,000. But if we're at 300,000 now, if you can confirm that with your records, then um, that should be reflected in our Muni Code. And the fact that it is a reserved fund should also be reflected in our Muni Code um, for both the blighted properties and the, and the uh, pedestrian safety fund. Those are my comments. Go ahead, Dr. Rowe. For the benefit of the public, um, can you explain for the public how funds have to be encumbered to roll over or they go back into the general fund? It's not that they're missing, that we need to encumber them because I hear a lot of conversations and I don't want the public to walk out of here not understanding how government money rolls over. You have to encumber the money. So can you walk them through that? All right, so basically with the, the general fund in Pacific that if the funds are not used at the end of the fiscal year, which if not used by uh, September the 30th, they roll over into what is known as fund balance. So the only thing that continues and roll over is gonna be your capital projects. Those items are continuous, but with the general fund, it's either those funds are spent, and if there's anything left over in excess of revenues over expenditure, it goes into fund balance. So, it, so it's not like people can say, okay, I got $10,000 left in my operating budget. I want to carry that over to the, to the next year. Mm -hmm. It's only tied to a project. If a project has not been completed, then those funds can be encumbered and carried forward. Thank you. So, uh, Mayor, for the benefit, again, of the public, <coughs> any funds that we have earmarked for pedestrian safety, at our meeting next week, we need to encumber it and roll it over to next year or it goes in that fund balance or the money is gone. So it's not like it disappears, it's just in the fund balance. And I just want the public to say, because they talk about money moving and that's just how government funds operate. So right. thank you for that clarification. Right, thank, you. But thank you for that. I, I do think that it's important to see it you know, in that list and then have a separate page like we do for all of these others on like what that money was spent on, what those, okay. you know, and what's left in that, but, but definitely. Okay. Um, and so if we are voting to, um, we're gonna hear public comment before we vote on anything, but um, if we're voting to approve this budget, can we approve it as amended with the inclusion of this pedestrian safety fund? Or we approve it like it is, and then we bring you back an amended um, budget, which I believe the council did last year in probably October or November. Um, the, oh, yeah, the we prior, a lot. Yes. The, the prior brought back the, the entire budget with the entire new ordinance. We can do that.
Can we approve it today, though, with the inclusion of the fund? Like, why, why wait? Because I want to make sure that the one million one seventy five is actually there. Because you, you, you gave me that number, but I just want to double check to to make sure. Okay. Can you add a line? Even if we don't have a good number, I think that would address his concern that the funds are segregated. Well, you can do that just to say that that will be done without a, a number. Make right. sure we got the right dollar amount. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and with that, seeing no other hands, I um, we're going to get to the best part of the meeting where we hear from our public about how you all want your tax dollars spent. So with that, I'm going to open the public hearing. And Mr. Clerk, do we have any speakers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> we actually uh, have five people who have signed up to provide live public comment. We've also uh, received some written comments, which uh, uh, were forwarded to you previously. Actually, it's four cards. Um, when I call your name, please uh, come to the center mic. Uh, you have two minutes to make your statement. Please state your name, uh, address, and uh, district. Tonight's uh, four speakers are Richard Snellings, Jewel Johnson, Brianna McGeehan and Naima Gilyard. Be nice, Mr. Snellings. Alright, my name is Richard Snellings, 1981 Golden Trail, uh, City of South Fulton, District 1. Uh, as I was paying my bills today and thinking about this budget hearing, I kept thinking to myself about how I did not have the option to take from Peter. I'm sorry, take from Paul and pay Peter. I have, I have to budget within my means and make it work. There's no reason why the city of South Fulton should not be expected to do the same while passing expenses on to the taxpayer. I am very well aware that expenses are increasing everywhere. I am reminded about this every time I look at my city, my city portion of my tax bill where they increased $1,400 over last year. We the people are expecting each of our public accountants to stay within its means. I'd like to encourage our officials to use the city of Roswell as an example. They actually lowered their millage rate, effectively reducing property taxes for many homeowners. As I was reviewing the proposed budget, I couldn't help but notice that council budgets are also increasing, in many cases, around $25,000 each. If I'm not mistaken, that's around the same amount in totality as those flyers that council has set out in January that we received but never asked for. In the case of Roswell, they have proven to their residents that they can manage public funds appropriately, offering relief to its residents without the need for frivolous referrals and actions. The only way the only way to vote on this proposed budget is no. Thank you. My name is Jewel Johnson, and I live at 4660 Orkin Lane, Dustin Lane. Good evening, Mayor and Council. With the, uh, we, the people of the City of South Fulton, have received watered-down budget information. Now you want to implement a budget of what I would call a budget of failure. The people asked for an operational audit, but instead you wanted to contract an internal auditor. This, there is no budget for impact fee, an impact study. You were asked not to implement a one carrier for our trash service. You disrespected the will of the people and embarrassed us in the public. America has no kings or queens. You are only an employee of the people. Change your ways. Listen to the people. And I ask tonight that you do not pass this budget. I don't ever remember having a budget hearing and then turn around right off on the on the second of our first meeting and vote. And I would say, please don't have another budget meeting when some when the, some of the other council people are out on training or whatever they're out on. We don't meet in person enough. I'm offended that you did this when you could have uh, changed the date so we would have had everybody in person. Please respect the people and listen to the people. 
Thank you, uh, Ms. Johnson. Just a point of information, this is actually our third budget hearing. The first two were um, online, but we did ask to specifically have at least one in-person meeting. But we did have two before that. You can't see I them. I do have online. 13 minutes. I apologize. I have been under the weather, and I don't get a chance to, to be on all the virtual. That's the reason I'm really talking about in-person because we don't do enough to inform the public, which is one of the things that has happened, the reason we look so bad in the public, because it is so obvious that our council is so vain that they feel they're, they're kings and queens. They want to tell us what to do when they're only an employee of the people, and you must listen to the people. All right. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Okay, my name is Brianna McGeehan. I live in District 7, 4640 Gordon Street. Um, my comment is that it's actually been addressed, but I'll just add that my community is the only community that's gotten speed bumps through the pedestrian safety fund. Um, and as I've canvassed the city, everyone is talking about speed bumps. And what I'm hearing from people is that even people who have a valid need and there is a safety concern, they're being told that there are no resources for speed bumps. So that's something that we should definitely be addressing and get some traffic calming devices like throughout the city. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, our Councilwoman Emeritus. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, we, we have one other card. One so more. Anyway. Go ahead. Oh. <clears throat> Good evening, our Mayor and Council and citizens. Um, Can you get the mic a little closer to you, please? You know Ms. what's wrong? I need to pull this down. And I'm really the the mic is just, yeah. Pull it down? Or closer to me? Okay. Um, well, did you hear me say hello to everybody? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, was look, I, I really was going to start out by talking about um, why we became a city. And some of us here worked on that. And we knew that we wanted to get away from Fulton County. We wanted to be our own city. We wanted to do all these wonderful and great things for each other. And we are a little bit five years down the road. And yes, some good things have happened. And some good things, not so good. And then some really bad things. So I wanted to start out by talking about the budget and it being a lot of meat and no potatoes. But I didn't have that presentation. And I didn't know where that presentation was. And I got the presentation off the finance department's um, website. And it was really kind of bare bones, and I just couldn't believe it. But now I know, and they told me that I'm going to get it. So I have to just um, jump around this a little, a little bit. We do have a budget that increased from 100 and Thirty to one hundred and seventy-two million dollars. That is a lot of money. A lot of money, a lot of activity. But what I want to see is what budgets usually have, and that is a justification and a narrative that is somehow related to a strategy in some way. A way back in the past. We did, if you look at earlier ones, we did have budgets like that. And Ms. Slayton, I'm not trying to offend you in any kind of way or say anything about your budget because I think that you did an excellent presentation, okay? But I just want to bring that up. But there are things in that budget that bothers me that we've already talked about. The citizens asked for an operational audit. They asked over and over again. So what do we see in the budget? A contracted line for an internal auditor. That is not what we asked for. I just want to make sure that everybody is clear about that. And as an ex-internal auditor, I'm saying that for a specific reason. Um, ARP funds, American Rescue Money, five million. We don't know what it's for. Infrastructure funds. We don't have a plan. What about broadband? 
Um, there are just so many things that are not in it, but I clearly see the eight million for solid waste. So I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned about it because I know departments, they submit what their needs are. Those needs are reviewed. It changes, it changes. And there's a lot of changes that need to occur with this budget. And I'm sure after I read the presentation, I'll have more comments that I will submit to Mayor and Council. But you know what? It would be a good idea to wait until the 27th, the meeting of the 27th, to vote on the budget, to just give it a little bit more time for um, some additional review. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's last speaker is Ms. Ivory M. Denson. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's been a long time since I have attended a, a council meeting, probably maybe since the beginning of the uh, pandemic. Excuse me, And uh, my name is Ivory M. Denson. I live in District 2. Um, my councilwoman is Kamalitha Gums, but I also interact quite a bit with Councilwoman Rowell. They, are, they have done a fantastic job. Um, it's been a while since I, I have attended a meeting. Um, as most of us have been plagued by that pandemic, but I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, I am, this past weekend, I saw or received an email that pointed to an interview by the mayor, which was extremely damning, but not not surprising. Um, some work for this new city and some opposed it. I opposed it because it is now where I expected it to be. During that time, I asked repeated one, one question. Tell me, please, those who are advocating, one city in America that was predominantly black occupied and was run by black officials. America has a lot of cities. I didn't know of one, and no one could tell me that there was one. And as I speak tonight, there still is not one. The city of South Fulton is run very poorly. The budget re reflects more than a 30% increase. That is unbelievable. It seems to me that we could be able to run a city more efficiently. I don't understand why it is that we have to pay so much. Maybe it's because the patronage, maybe we feel there are people that we need to hire who are not necessarily the best qualified, but they have connections. Uh, Ms. Gillard, sorry about your defeat because you were an asset to this council, in my opinion, when I was coming to all of those meetings. I'm asking not for that kind. Please don't let me, let me finish, please. I want a forensic, I want a forensic audit to see where every penny has been spent. It is unconscionable that um, taxes have gone up. Now, thank God, I'm, I'll be 79 this coming uh, Saturday, 24. Thank you. I'm not caught up with what some of the up. But I remember when I was young too, and had to pay taxes. And I, and when you got a family, I mean that can be a tremendous burden. And and heaven knows, I was hoping so much that the city of South Fulton would be the first one whose occupants are predominantly African American, whose officials happen to be Af African American, and was run well. Please, at 79, I don't have a whole lot of time left. I hope to God Almighty that I will see one well-run city that's run by black people in America. And I hope and pray to God it is the city of South Fulton. Please let this old soul see that before I leave here. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Is that, is that it for our public comments? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that completes the public comment for this evening. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, before I close the public hearing, Madam City Manager, there, there are just some points of clarification. Uh, there was a big increase in our budget. Um, a lot of that was ARP funds. There were other things that happened. Could you just talk about how we got from 130 to 172? Yeah, so, <clears throat> well, in regards to ARP, um, the council approved my recommendation for those projects. Uh, they were approved in October of 2021. So if you are looking for the ARP uh, list, it is on our city's website. Our city received three point, I'm sorry, $11.3 million. Um, and it goes across from projects related to community outreach, to infrastructure, and in regards to even some projects internally, broadband was also uh, mentioned. Um, in regards to the increase we talked about, you know, we do have 89 new positions that we're bringing on. Uh, these are all key positions that will help run the operations of this city. Uh, you ask for an efficient government, we're trying to give that to you. Um, 89 positions may sound like a lot, uh, but relatively speaking, a city of 108,000 people, 90 square miles, I do assure you that we do need every single one of these employees that we are asking for. Um, what, what else were you? Just yeah. that $22 million increase. So we know that $11 million of it is ARP funds. Mm -hmm. Some of it is also grants and right. the blighted Right, and Fulton and Industrial. Fulton industrial. Because you just talk about, because I don't want people to think that we raise taxes to get this larger budget. Absolutely, um, you know, the, the council hasn't raised the millage increase, the millage rate, pardon me, since 2020. We've been at 12.899. So I do wanna make sure that that's clear that we did not, uh, this council did not raise the millage rate increase. And yes, some of the increase does have to do with um, Fulton Industrial Boulevard. Awesome. And, and is it in the, I guess you were in the pink slip And the fact that we were in a pandemic when in 2020 and then in 2021, we had some cost savings. Right. So that also impacted a lot of our budget. So now we're growing mm -hmm. and we're getting back to the normal operation of business. So I think that's important to also consider as well that we were in a pandemic for two years. Absolutely. So just a little point of order and adding some more context to what we're discussing. Thank you. All right, with that, I will. If I can make one. Yes, please. Because I want to make note to an email where we talked about on the, the traffic common device that it was supposed to be the $4.7 million, where 25% of that, we do have that in the, in the budget. And that is what the $4.7 million is. It's actually $168,000 per district that's been allotted as well as 1,762 for the police department, 1,762 for the, the fire as well. So that, we do have the traffic common option in there for each district. Awesome, so we just need to, to move them to that line. Uh, thank you. All right. And with that, I'm going to close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. Sure, <clears throat> Allow me to sound the uh, ordinance first. Yes, please. Motion. Mm -hmm. So ordinance for the fiscal year 2023 budget for general fund of the city of South Fulton, Georgia, appropriating the amounts showing in each fund as expenditures expenses, adopting the several items of revenue anticipations, prohibiting expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding available and for other lawful purposes. All right, I will entertain a motion. I move that we adopt the budget as sounded. Second. Friendly amendment. Then we add the pedestrian safety fund, um, and I'll leave it with no money to we. Is that amount confirmed? Do we can we use that number? Or are you just okay with the name, the line item for the pedestrian safety? So it's already in the ordinance. The oh, it is in there. Okay. It's already there. Okay, so no amendment needed. No, I, I think it's, it's, it's not, it's in the ordinance, but it's, 
It's so we a, add the line item. Yes. It's not a restricted fund. Yeah, restricted fund with the amount allocated. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Would you roll call the vote? I'm sorry, any discussion? All right, uh, roll call the vote, please. Roll call vote to approve uh, the budget as sounded. <coughs> Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Councilmember Willis? Councilmember Willis? I had discussion. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll have closing comments from all of council as soon as we finish this vote, Councilmember Willis. Right, but I asked, I said I had discussion before we went into the vote. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Do you have that, Council? Do you have that, Mr. Adams? I didn't show it in the ch chat. Uh, well, we're, we're in the vote now, Councilman Willis. Is, is, is it possible just to vote and give your comments at the end of the meeting? Yes, yeah, she actually did put it okay, in the chat. It, it says she has discussion in the chat. There you go. All right, um, give, us, give us a minute. We're working these techniques technical difficulties out. Uh, Councilman Willis, go ahead with your discussion. If, if, Mayor, if you want to just give us, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to staff for their time and due diligence. I mean, many can sit around and criticize and, and many can, can sit around and, and um, you know, uh, talk negatively. Uh, but I want to say that I have firsthand witnessed staff uh, staying up in the wee hours um, of the evening, late evenings, and getting to work early to uh, get us through this budget process. Um, and I want to thank each of you for taking time and, and meeting with me and addressing my concerns and needs. Um, you know, I know there are some things that we need to continue to work on. But for the most part, I really appreciate your time and all of your efforts. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to, I got it, Miss. <laughs> uh, uh, could, could we have your vote, please, uh, Councilman Willis? Councilman Willis. Councilmember Willis, we're asking for your vote. Oh, there a lot of echoes and with the way that this was set up before we could hear but something happened and i can't really hear anything if you want to put a, a, a wanna, and i will say this for um willis sebastian and reeves if you want to put your vote in the chat you can we have the chat up we're just uh, asking for the vote uh to approve this budget with the amendment for the pedestrian safety fund and a restricted fund I see a yes from all. I see a yes from Sebastian and Willis. Councilman Reeves. While we're waiting for Councilman Reeves, I will uh, just let you all know we are also going to be updating our voting systems and our clerk systems or be able to vote on You'll see it on the screen like you do in the legislature. It'll be great, provided we have Wi-Fi and everything working in the meeting. Um, all right, don't see Councilman Reeves. I'm going to move on Councilwoman Williams. Yes. All right, that has passed. And I will now just hear a closing comments, starting with uh, District 1, Councilwoman Rao. Um, I too want to thank the staff. I think the presentation gave me the, the level of detail and um, my follow-up questions, so thank you for the um, work that you did on that. And I'm looking forward to the final book uh, that we typically have that has a lot more detail, which uh, for the benefit of the public, that comes after we adopt the budget. So, And that's historically been the case. Council that comes. Yes, yes. Announcements, all of that. What you okay. got going on? I got you, Council. Okay. Um, one of the things, too, I do want to thank staff. You have done an excellent job uh, keeping us informed and meeting with us with our questions. So.
kudos to you, um, Ms. Karen Slate Dixon. I know uh, we are not the easiest, um, but you have done an outstanding job and been very professional, so thank you. Um, I also want to mention that we will be having our annual gun buyback on October the 15th, and we will also be doing a senior safety summit on October the 27th. That the month of October, of course, is Breast Cancer Month, but it's also Public Safety Awareness Month. So I do encourage you all to come out. Also, too, I want residents, especially with the Pedestrian Safety Fund, to make sure that they're exploring other options um, in regards to traffic calming. Uh, speaking with the chief today um, in regards to speed bumps, a lot of, um, even with our police department, a lot of accidents are caused by speed bumps trying to slow these people down. So I want people to really realistically look at other traffic calming mechanism, whether it's speed tables. I am a fan more of speed tables versus speed bumps because again, you're, you're slowing traffic down and things of that nature. So I know once we get through this process, um, you will probably get negative feedback from uh, our fire and police because they are more about saving lives and reducing the number of accidents. So I do want to encourage your HOAs and other um, residents that are looking forward to some type of traffic calming to consider other options than speed bumps and they're very noisy so i don't want them in front of my house i don't know about anybody else but either way they're a lot so um i just wanted to say that from my call um with you know public safety today in regards to speed bumps and that's it thank you councilwoman willis and we're probably going to turn our sound off so you may not hear us but we will hear you There is so much technical difficulty with us that are working and, and trying to talk virtually. I would uh, just like to. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Willis. Uh, Councilman Sebastian. Uh, Councilman Sebastian. Okay, Mr. Mayor, um, first of all, I too want to thank staff. Um, it's my first time through the process and I did give hopefully some fresh eyes feedback that we can take into consideration for um, the next go around. And you know, I'm, I know I've had my issues with the District 4 systems getting those up and down. So I know you guys have had to be kind of tackling that as we go. So just want to thank you guys for the extra effort. Um, I, also, I also hear the concerns of folks who you know, talked about, you know, trying to save someone on a millage rate. I, I, I know I met with staff and got some additional information. And so while I'm not completely happy that we weren't able to do anything this year, uh, I'm certainly hoping that we can get, get over some of the economic woes and some of the uncertainty that we have to account for in our budget this year. And hopefully looking towards 23, where I think we can give something back to our citizens. Um, in terms of activities for District 4 announcements, um, this Saturday we are having our fall festival at Wilkinson, Wilkinson Mill Park. So I invite everyone to come out. It's kind of we have some nice things planned. And, and so just want the general public to know that they're free to come out and um, see what's happening um, in the Green District. Uh, also, watch out for the Atlanta Sling. Um, festival that's going to be at Wilkinson Mill Park as well. That's the Slingshot um, Sling Fest Atlanta. And that's going to be on the 29th of October. And also look out for additional vaccination and um, fire safety programs that are coming as well within the next um, six weeks in this report. Thank you. Thanks to the public that have come in and voice their opinions on um, even the budget this evening, all those who have participated across all three of these meetings. Thank you all. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Councilman Sebastian. Councilman Reeves. Okay, uh, Council.
Stormy Williams. I have no comments. Okay. Um, thank you. I have a I have a few comments. I'm going to start um, by reading this quote from James Baldwin. Uh, he says, I love America more than any other country in the world. And exactly for this reason, I insist on the right to criticize her perpetually. I, I've said this many times and I just think that it's worth saying again that um, our all debate is not this, this function. We are a five-year-old democracy and I too want to thank our staff. I think that you have done an excellent job. Though many of us have criticisms, uh, please don't confuse our criticism with thinking that we think the city is poorly run. I, I understand that some people do have that opinion and that is their opinion, but I think we, we pour through these budgets and these documents and we criticize because we love this place. As someone who was born and raised here uh, 46 years ago uh, next month, um, I was actually born in Atlanta at Piedmont Hospital in Buckhead. And I will say that uh, Atlanta has been a majority black and a black run city with black mayors and city council people for 50 years until 2020. And I think they've done an excellent job. They have attracted the Olympics. They've diversified now, but uh, they are, are, they still have a sizable black population and, and, a, and a black mayor and lots of black people in their city hall. And I think it's, an, I think it's a city that's well run. Um, and I think that our city is pretty well run as, also. I do want to make a few announcements. Uh, this Friday, we have a free reading of American Skin. You may have seen that Emmy award winning movie. We have a free, it was based on a play, so if you would like to see the play, it's based on. There's a free reading Friday at 7 at Southwest Art Center. Uh, Saturday, there is another green festival happening in addition to Wilkerson Mill. So go to Wilkerson Mill, uh, which is, Mr. Sebastian was just sending me that, from 3 to 7. Um, from 4 to 7, there is a Green Fest uh, featuring uh, kidpreneurs. So uh, it, it's mostly uh, children entrepreneurs. Um, they're gonna be talking about agriculture. It's going to be led by Miss Kendall Ray George's youngest certified farmer in history. And then on Sunday from 12 to five, it is Sunday, Travis Barber and Bless One um, are going to be having a special father-son uh, mentorship and fishing uh, program at the Berry Kind Ranch at 6375 East Stubbs Road, uh, which is right around the corner from Cliftondale uh, UMC and Fire Station Number 3 in District 4. So, Mr. Sebastian, you'll be seeing a lot of me this weekend. Um, lastly, I want to say that behind all of these numbers, are real people and our deputy chief uh, and, I, and I've spoken with him about this and so you know he said that I could speak about this but our, our deputy chief uh, our deputy fire chief Pat Wilson is is facing a um, huge trial uh, with his son Mark many of you may have seen and heard about this in the media uh, I just want to let you know chief Wilson I believe that we are going to be having Mark's red velvet cake very soon, in less than 10 years. But however long it takes, your entire fire department, your mayor, and all of the city of South Fulton will be with you every step of the way. Thank you all so much for coming, South Fulton, forever. Mr. there was a correction. Uh, Councilman Sebastian indicated that the fall festival is from two to seven and uh, not three to seven, so okay. it starts at two. Starts at two, so you can make the Wilkerson Mill Fall Festival at two, then come over to uh, Southwest Art Center at four. Uh, we're gonna remind people to get a flu shot. There's also another, uh, 
There's also another uh, COVID vaccine out. They put all the new stuff in there. Get that. Get your monkey pox shot if you can get that. I just had my second one this week. Get all your shots. All right, thank you so much. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Let's just do hands. We'll do hands and we can see. Put your hands up in the queue. All right. Thank you so much. We're adjourned. Yes.